From the 1960s through the 1980s, one man laid down more recordings than any other guitar player in history, Tommy Tedesco. Born on July 3, 1930 in Niagara Falls, New York, Tommy moved to the West Coast and quickly became one of the most sought after session players in Hollywood with over 7,000 sessions to his credit, including several hundred top 40 hits. He became part of a collective group of other session players, loosely known as the Wrecking Crew, which included Carol Kay on guitar and bass, Hal Blaine on percussion, and other guitarists such as Glenn Campbell, Howard Roberts, Barney Kessel, and James Burton. He's credited with playing on a bunch of different TV shows, including the theme song for M.A.S.H. He also played guitar on the Batman theme. Bonanza. My Three Sons. Acres, just to name a few. Tommy also performed on a number of film soundtracks, including Jaws, The Godfather, The French Connection, Field of Dreams. He also did some playing on some Elvis films. During this time, many well known rock and pop groups were employing Tommy services to lay down tracks on their albums, such as the Beach Boys, the Mamas and the Papas, Frank Sinatra, Nancy Sinatra, Frank Zappa, Jan and Dean, the Everly Brothers, and countless others. What's interesting to mention here is that when you look at live footage of these groups playing from that era, the musicians you see playing those instruments are not who's actually on the recordings. That was actually done by members of the Wrecking Crew, the Hollywood Session Players, and Tommy Tedesco playing a bulk majority of the guitar parts on those albums. Now, Tommy was also traveling a lot and doing seminars and loved showing other guitarists new ways to think and learn about playing the guitar. Tommy wasn't interested in a full-time teaching gig. He did write a number of books uh, for guitar players that I know I've studied from over the years. Tommy wasn't just an immensely talented guitar player, but he was also a uniquely funny individual. So when he would tell stories of working in Hollywood, he would tell the stories in such a funny way that you just couldn't help but laugh. Okay, I want to talk about, we're talking about money. This is the electric, when, we're, when I'm doing a picture call, this pays $120 for you do nothing, right? For three hours, right? As soon as you do this, that's 50% more. <laughs> that's what's called doubling. As soon as you plug in a thing or play banjo or mandolin, 50% for the first, 20% for each other one. You follow me? So all of a sudden, when you see a movie and you see guys going, and you're hearing all this, you know what's going on. Believe me, you say, ah, oh, there's something, you know. I'll be talking like, hey, you like this better like this? Yeah, it sounds pretty. How much pretty? 50% prettier, you know. <laughs> These are all gimmicks. Last year, this. This is my, my biggest gimmick last year. I was doing this thing, and they wanted uh, that underwater guy, Jack. What's his name? The guy. That's the one. Okay, they wanted some underwater music. So I give him this. They went crazy. They said, oh, my God. I love it. Okay. And you can tell after they love that for me once, you know, you know, they're gonna get it all year, right? <laughs> you know, the main thing is we're dealing with all different guys. So right after that, another guy come up to me and said, uh, uh, "Hey, uh, we were on another date, and Ian Underwood uh, was a synthesizer player. They says, Ian, give us something, uh, you know, uh, real, real weird because uh, Fair Fawcett's putting her hand in this, 
in this uh, gopher hole and there's going to be a snake. So I'm going. <laughs> and they say, yeah, Ian, that's great. That sounds sensational. I'm going, yes, I didn't do nothing. Oh, Tom, yeah, yeah, Tom. Great, Tom, thank you. So, and see, that has to do with, that's our gimmicks. You know, right after that, we did a cannonball. You remember the picture cannonball run? Because okay, so in in this cannonball run, they wanted one of those. Uh, they they had this police. police uh, there was a whole police chase. So the the one play the police car ended up going in a swimming pool. And they says, anybody got any underwater music? Yeah. Well, okay, let me see here. Yo, so uh, I'll play, play the key G two three. They went nuts when they heard that song. They went crazy. They said, wow, yeah, that's perfect. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say this. Uh, for years in L.A., I was always known as a Latin specialist. Now, let me show you what a Latin specialist is. A few years ago, I did the John Denver special. And it was in, took place in Mexico. So they called me and said, Tom, give us some Mexican music. Charlie's Angels, they were in Puerto Rico. They said, Tom, give me some Puerto Rican music. <laughs> what the hell, I was gonna learn something new for all them countries? Shit, no. <laughs> and I'll never forget Starsky and Hutch. There was a episode in Bolivia, and uh, with Nelson Riddle was the composer on it. So he called me, he says, uh, Tom, he says, give me some instant uh, Bolivian revolt music. <laughs> Nelson looked at me, he says, Tedesco, you're the greatest. I said, yeah, Nelson, I know. <laughs> so, you know, I've done that for 700 countries, seven parts all over the world, over and over again. But the main thing is you do it for all different people. You don't do it for the same guy every week, you know. <laughs> and you get away with it. In fact, uh, one time I did a concert at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion downtown with a 100-piece orchestra, and Jerry Goldsmith wrote this guitar part. And in the middle, it says, oh, uh, ad lib. So naturally, you know what I'm gonna do? All through the audience, you heard just snickers here and there, and people wondering, what the hell are them guys laughing at? They knew. I had a lot of students from here at the concert. You know? So they were digging all this shit. You know? There's a clip where he was featured on the gong show wearing a pink tutu and basically playing a, a song about the, uh, the ups and downs of being a session player, which, while the, the skit is funny, you can kind of see that it's brutally honest on how cutthroat that industry is in Hollywood and where for one day you're you're on top of the world and the next nobody's calling you for a gig. 1992 Tommy suffered a stroke which basically left him with paralysis and ended his guitar career. However the following year he released his autobiography entitled Confessions of a Guitar Player. A lifetime smoker, Tommy finally succumbed to lung cancer in 1997 at the age of 67. Let me know what you guys think. Drop those comments down below. 
you have not already done so, hit that subscribe and that like button for me. And until next time, keep rocking on. Thank you.